Good afternoon, people watching Miss 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins. Past, present, and future was buried and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. That's why we're saved, how we're saved, and why we're kept saved. It's only through his blood that we're saved. Because it's only the blood of Jesus that can wash away your sins. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, you and I are whosoever, believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. Rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time. Don't be left here. <laughs> Don't be left here. And sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit will um, minister to you, encourage you, give you discernment, give you the word. He will change you. That's what he does. Period. We got to talk about this AI again. Now, anytime a major CEO, former major CEO, the CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, Eric uh, Schmidt came out and warned people against this AI, then it's time to take note, um, big time. AI could pose existential risk and governments need to know how to make sure that the technology is not, listen to this, misused by evil people. This was the former CEO of uh, Google. He warned about that today. It says the future of AI has been thrust into the center of conversations among technologists and policymakers, grappling with what the technology looks like going forward and how it should be regulated. Chat G, uh, GPT, the chat box that went viral last year has arguably sparked more awareness of AI as major firms around the world look to launch rival products and talk up their AI capabilities. Remember the movie iRobot with uh, Will Smith? Yeah, yeah, that's what this reminds me of. It says, speaking at the Wall Street Journal CEO Coun uh, Council Summit in London, Schmidt said his concern is that AI is an existential risk. This is why I know that this is going to be used with the Antichrist. And the Great Tribulation. This is definitely going to be used. An existential th uh, risk is defined as many, 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 many people harmed or killed. Dow fall, the Dow. Hold on a minute. This is breaking news here. It's talking about the Dow. Hold on one second. Uh, let me see what the stocks are because I haven't checked it. Oh, it's falling. Looks like it's in the red, 242. 
Yeah, it's falling fast. Due to the debt ceiling talks. But anyway, this says right here, um, there are scenarios, not today, but reasonably soon, where these systems will be able to find zero day exploits in cyber issues or discover new kinds of biology. Now, this is fiction today, but its reasoning is likely to be true. And when that happens, we want to be ready to know how to make sure these things are not misused by evil people. Now, again, you got a former CEO of a major um, internet, Google, CEO, former CEO. If he's saying this, this thing is ultimately bad. Zero day exploits are security vulnerabilities found by hackers in software and systems. Schmidt, who was the CEO of Google from 2001 to 2011, did not have a clear view on how AI should be regulated, but said that it is a broader question for society. However, he said there is unlikely to be a new regulatory agency set up in the US dedicated to regulating AI. Schmidt is not the first major technology figure to warn about the risk of AI. Uh, Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, which developed chat GB, uh, GPT, admitted in March that he is a little bit scared. And this is exactly what he said. He's a little bit scared of artificial intelligence. Or as Sandra Bullock said in the movie Miss Congeniality, he's a little feared. <laughs> this is what the guy said. This guy, he developed chat GPT. He said he worries about authoritarian, authoritarian governments developing this technology. Tesla CEO, um, Elon Musk said in the past that he thinks AI represents one of the biggest risks to civilization. I think I did a video about this the other day about that. Even current Google and Alphabet CEO, Sinder Pinchai, who recently oversaw the company's launch of his own chat box called Bard AI said, the technology will impact every product across every company. Adding society needs to prepare for the changes. This is, this is what's coming in the Great Tribulation. And it makes perfect sense. Schmidt was part of the National Security Commission on AI in the U.S., which in 2019 began a review of the technology, including a potential regulatory framework. The commission published this review in 2021, warning that the U.S. was underprepared for the age of AI. Now, I wonder I wonder how this is going well, we don't have to wonder. We know this is going to happen during the Great Tribulation, of course. But again, we're seeing a precursor to what's coming. And this is coming quick. It's already here. It's already here. And, that, and like I said the other day when I did a video about this the other day, it's too late to stop it. They can't do anything to stop it now. That's just what's going on. Then I got this thing from Hal Turner. Now, they're preparing for an offensive. And uh, it says, according to Turkish sources, fierce negotiations are underway in NATO regarding the transfer of F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. While there are no questions about the very fact that of the transfer that there is a gigantic opposition by many countries caused by the U.S. initiative to transfer the F-16 jets to the armed forces of Ukraine. 
with the ability with the ability to use B61 free fall nuclear bombs and the Americans insist that Ukrainian pilots also undergo training for their use oh I see but we're not involved in any way I see At the moment, there is a consensus on the transfer of at least 24 aircraft to Ukraine um, with at least one squadron, 12 aircraft to be trained in the use of nuclear bombs. The United States, let's look, the United States, Great Britain, Poland, and Germany are in favor of this idea and Turkey, Greece, and Hungary are totally against it. Opponents of this initiative believe that in this way the risk of an escalation of the conflict increases sharply. In addition, the United States will be forced to keep a stockpile of nuclear weapons within the reach of Russian operational tactical systems. In addition, the negotiations were significant, significantly complicated by yesterday's UAF raid on the territory of the Belgorod region, which cast doubts on any guarantees from Kiev on the non-use of any weapons received from the West on Russian territory itself. On the other hand, an active lobbyist for the decision is Poland which plans through the Ukrainian option to finally achieve the deployment of nuclear weapons on its territory and also to get them actually under its operational control. This right here, you know what? <laughs> God is giving clues about the timing of the rapture. I'm just saying. For those of you who want to say, oh, we don't know the time or the hour. We don't know the, uh, the hour or the timing of the rapture. We're in the timing of the rapture, folks. Please don't be uh, naive. Please spare me. Now for me to sit here and say, oh, it's going to happen today at 12.02 a.m. Today. No, I would never say that. But we are in the hour right now. This is the hour of the rapture right now. And God is handing out clues on top of clues on top of clues. And people are still blind. It baffles me. No, we're not going to be here long. <laughs> not at all. I'm going to link all this in the description box. Um... Like I said, something is about to happen, but I still feel, I think, and I, I, this is what I'm feeling. I feel that Israel is going to start with Israel and everything else is going to fall into place. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Things are going to get destroyed. It says so Isaiah 17, 1, where Syria will become a ruinous heap. But don't forget that the Battle of Armageddon is stopped because we who were raptured prior to the tribulation will come back down with Christ. That's the second coming of Christ by the way. Just saying. But anyway, I'm going to link all this in the description box and I will be back later. Thank you.